Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Alexis Eaton. And I'm Chloe Gross. And today we're going to be examining and critiquing the sustainability initiatives of Birds Bees. Birds Bees is a natural personal care product company. And while most of us associate the company with their lip balm, they've done an incredible job of expanding their range of products. They now sell makeup, lotions, skincare solutions for pregnant women and babies, and even natural pet care products. So Burt's Bees was co-founded by Burt Shavitz and Roxanne Quimby in Maine in 1984. Currently, Burt's Bees is based in Durham, North Carolina. The company has grown from a farmer's market operation to selling products in over 30,000 stores in six countries. In regards to sales, Burt's Bees saw $150,650,000 in 2018. So Burt's Bees business model is centered around the triple bottom line, meaning they don't hold profit paramount like most companies do. They value economic prosperity, social equity, and ecological conservation equally. And they call this concept the greater good. And the greater good is all about providing customers with natural products and giving back to the people and places that help make those products. They believe that nature should be valued and protected as a resource without compromise. And, they're fi and finally, they're also working to uh, enable the circular economy. And the circular economy is a regenerative economic model that would essentially design out the concept of waste and reshape the linear system that we're currently working with. Since its conception, Bird's Bees has been known for its sustainable practices. All three pillars of sustainability are addressed at Bird's Bees, with many of its initiatives benefiting not only the planet and its profit, but also sustain, um, substantially bettering the lives of people involved. One example of this is their sourcing of honey from wild hives in Tanzania and backyard beekeepers in Vietnam. Bird's Bees benefits from ethically sourced honey, the suppliers have steady jobs, and the crucial pollinator populations are supported. Evidently, this initiative benefits all. So I could go on for hours about each of Burt's Bees uh, sustainability initiatives, but in the interest of time, I'll keep it short. So 99.6% of the ingredients in Burt's Bees products are natural. And by natural, they mean ingredients that are obtained only from plants, animals, microbiological or mineral sources that are not materially altered in processing. So lots of companies tend to abuse the word natural because the FDA doesn't regulate the term, but Bird's Bees is really trying to put a stamp on it and define it and implement that for all. The company has also been carbon neutral since 2015, and they've achieved that through offsetting their emissions and through amending their operational practices. They've donated large sums of money to biodiversity efforts, as well as they've supported pollinator forage. 100% of their packaging is recyclable, either through curbside recycling or the TerraCycle program. And 50% of the materials that they use in their packaging have already been recycled. So they're really trying to you know, enable that circular economy with their packaging. So Burt's Bees has created shared value along its supply chain by training women in skills like building fuel efficient cook stoves, quality shade kernel processing, and cooperative development in their West African communities. Burt's Bees is a founding member of the Global Shea Alliance and the Responsible MICA Initiative. Burt's Bees is also philanthropic through its Greater Good Foundation, providing 2.4 million in grants to local and global organizations, such as Keep Durham Beautiful, Farmer Food Share, the NAACP, and Habitat for Humanity. So in 2007, Clorox bought Burt's Bees for $925 million. And lots of people were nervous because it's a bleach company buying a company that sells lip balm. Uh, but it actually ended up being mutually beneficial because Clorox was able to help Burt's Bees be, um, increase their output and distribution. And Burt's Bees was able to help Clorox become more sustainable. So listed here are some of the initiatives that Burt's Bees had that Clorox was able to adopt and some of the progress that Clorox made. And it actually ended up saving Clorox a lot of money in the long run, which just goes to show that being sustainable doesn't have to be expensive like most people think. You can actually save money being sustainable. And as always, there is room for improvement. Burt's Bees should aim to have the least amount of emissions possible and then purchase offsets for unavoidable greenhouse gas outputs. 
Rigsby should try to integrate more sustainable investing into their Greater Good Foundation to provide long lasting capital to impactful organizations. They should also aim to use less plastic and more compostables at a higher rate in their packaging. This is especially important because some of Burt's Bees products can only be recycled through TerraCycle, which is a mail-in program and not necessarily accessible to everyone. So a special thank you to Dr. Fiona Wilson for providing this opportunity for us and for all who have presented here today.